This lesson is part of my video course that teaches how to build event-driven Spring Boot microservices with Apache Kafka. For other lessons in this playlist, please check description of this lesson. So, what is Apache Kafka? If you look for what is Apache Kafka on the Internet, you might find a similar definition to this one. Apache Kafka is distributed event streaming platform that is used to collect, process, store, and integrate data at scale. When I think of it as a microservices developer, I think of Apache Kafka as a platform that can run a cluster of multiple servers which can span across several data centers. It is a platform that enables us, developers, to build event-driven applications that can continuously exchange data with each other. And we can scale these microservices as needed to support larger traffic. If we have small number of users using our application, then we can scale down and start fewer instances of our microservices. And if we have a large number of users using our application, then we can scale up and start a larger number of instances of our microservices. And thanks to Apache Kafka, our microservices will still be able to exchange messages with each other without any log in performance. Let's have a look at a more detailed example of how Apache Kafka can be used with microservices. Apache Kafka can be used to help microservices communicate with each other. For example, on the left side of my diagram, I have products microservice. As soon as a new product is created, this microservice wants to inform other microservices in my system that there is a new product. And it can do it by publishing an event. For example, it will publish product created event in the form of JSON payload. Now, because this product microservice can publish or it can produce an event, in Kafka it is called producer. And to help us publish events, Kafka provides producer API. So one of the core components in application that uses Kafka is producer. And in microservices architecture, producer is a microservice that publishes an event. On the right side of my diagram, I have three other microservices that want to be notified when a new product is created. And because these microservices are waiting to receive information about the newly created product, in Kafka they are called consumers. Consumer is a second core component in application that uses Kafka. In microservices architecture, consumer is a microservice that consumes event. Now, these consumer microservices, they are dynamic in nature. They can scale up and down. When load on our system increases, we can start up more instances of these microservices. And when the load on our system decreases, we can shut down extra instances. IP addresses and port numbers of these microservices will keep on changing and the product's microservice that publishes events will never know the exact address of these consumer microservices and it will not know how many of them are running. They are completely location transparent to product's microservice and product's microservice cannot send information about newly created product to any of these microservices directly. Instead, it will send this information to Kafka Broker. You can think of Kafka Broker as a server that accepts information from Kafka Producer and it stores it on its hard disk. To make our system more reliable, you will usually start more than one Kafka Broker. And this way, if one Kafka Broker is down, then another Kafka Broker that is running can be used to service requests. So Broker is another very important architectural component in Kafka-based application. And it has several very important responsibilities. And one of them is to accept published event and store it on its hard disk in Kafka Topic. And Topic is another very important component in application architecture that uses Apache Kafka. You can think of Kafka Topic as a very durable storage of events. Information inside the topic, it is stored on a hard disk and it is replicated to other servers in Kafka cluster, meaning that you will have multiple copies of your data created. 
This way, if you lose one server, and if you lose all data that is stored on that server, you still have your data stored on other servers in Kafka cluster. And the good news is that your microservices, they will not even notice that one of the servers went down and lost all of the data. This is because you still have other servers running and all of these servers, they have copy of your data. Now, inside the topic, publish events are stored in multiple partitions. And each of these little cells in topic partition stores an event. When a new event gets stored in a topic, it is stored inside of these little cells. And then it gets replicated across multiple Kafka servers. When a new event arrives, it gets stored into a new cell, and then it gets copied over to other Kafka servers. So Kafka topic is another very important element in Kafka architecture that you need to understand. You will see how topics work in details in following lessons, because we will talk more about topics and topic partitions, but for now just remember that topics store events. If you are familiar with message queues, then Kafka topic is very similar to message queue, except that when event is consumed from Kafka topic, this event does not get deleted from topic right away. It stays in the topic for as long as needed, so that other microservices can also read this event. Alright, so producer publishes an event, this event gets stored in Kafka topic, and as soon as this event gets successfully stored in Kafka topic, consumer microservices can read this event from that Kafka topic. And because events are stored in separate partitions, consumer microservices can read events from these partitions in parallel. And reading events in parallel makes our system work much faster and it allows us to scale up our system. Because if needed, we can start more consumer microservices and each consumer will read events from its own partition in parallel. This way we can process a very large amount of events much faster. But again, you will see how it works in details in different slides when we actually start working with Kafka topics. And to help these consumer microservices receive their own copy of event, Kafka provides us with consumer API. Now, this was a high level overview of how Kafka can be used with microservices. In the following lessons, you will learn more about each of these core Kafka components, and you will learn how to start up multiple Kafka brokers, you will learn how to create topics, and you will learn how to implement Kafka producer and Kafka consumer Spring Boot microservices. All right, so Let's continue to the next lesson.